Hi, this is John. Today we're going to be emulating a PDP-10 from about 1966. The PDP-10 was a 36-bit machine. It was uh, physically quite large, as computers from that era were. Would have uh, taken up a good chunk of a room. And we're going to be running on it the operating system called ITS, which um, dated from about 1967 or so. And uh, on all of this we're going to be using this uh, VT510 serial console. This was built by uh, DEC, or Digital Equipment Corporation, the same company that built the PDP-10. And uh, the VT510 was built in 1993. It will, however, also be emulating something, which is the VT52, which came out in 1975. All that is going to be uh, connected to the Raspberry Pi Model 4, a little tiny computer, that is running SimH uh, as the simulator that uh, we're going to be using. Also, the VT510 was kind of interesting because uh, most of these serial terminals uh, will have a proprietary keyboard. The VT510 actually replaced the proprietary connector with a PS2 connector, and because I actually use this thing on a regular basis, uh, I preferred the IBM Model M keyboard. So, uh, connected to the VT510 is this Model M built in 1984. And uh, it's kind of, I'm not sure if you could quite call it emu um, emulation, but uh, the PS2 protocol, it was not native to the DEC VT series. And uh, neither was this keyboard layout. And uh, so you have some... Uh, different key maps that go on when it detects that you are not using a DEC keyboard. And, uh, of course, it has to sort of simulate being a, a PC host to the keyboard for signaling purposes. I have found that that simulation, or emulation, if you will, isn't really perfect. Uh, I can't use a PS2 KVM with this thing. It has to be an actual keyboard. So let me show you the business end of the hardware. This here is the Raspberry Pi. Uh, very typical for such a thing. Um, all I've got going with this thing is a uh, plugged into the USB port is a USB to serial adapter so I didn't have to mess with the TTL and trying to make that work with a VT510. So that's how the VT510 connects up to it and uh, later on I will just apply power to it. Now this is the back side of the VT510. Uh, you can see here on the plate um, that it was actually built in 1993. That odd-looking port there, which is kind of like an RJ45, but not quite, is the type of uh, serial port that was on these things. It is signal compatible. Uh, it's an RS-232, and uh, you can get adapters that will convert it to a DB9 or whatever. Uh, once the, With the VT510 series, and actually in some earlier ones, they introduced a standard DB25, which is what I'm using here but I do also have the uh, adapter so that I can use my VT220 and VT420 uh, if I want to. And of course, just because it's cool, I have to show you this label from the IBM Model M, built in 1984. Okay, well let's go ahead and uh, get this stuff going. First power on the VT510. I know that the earlier uh, VT terminals are actually powered by the Intel 8080, which was a uh, CPU also used in some uh, early microcomputers. Uh, I'm not quite sure if the VT510 still uses that CPU or not, but... Uh... Okay, now let's uh, configure the VT510. To get into the setup menu on the uh, PS2 PC-style keyboard, it's Alt Print Screen. Let's go over here and set it to emulate the VT-52. And just as a by the way, the VT-52 uh, did not use ANSI style uh, escape sequences like the uh, VT-100 did. So uh, when you use a uh, terminal emulator, Xterm, terminal app on a Mac, whatever, uh, basically you're emulating a successor of the VT-100 um, and uh, generally also a successor to this particular VT-510. But uh, we'll go ahead and uh, set it to VT52 mode so we can do something really old. Now let's uh, set our communication parameters here. And um, interestingly, you, you can set a different transmit and receive speed. I normally run this thing at 57600. Um, 
I'm certain that people didn't use that back in 1960s. So I'm going to set it to 9600. Actually, that is probably faster than uh, what was used. Um, back then, it would probably have been very common to use a actual teletype, which would have been a printer, a slow printer with a keyboard. Um, but uh, that would make for a very long video if I set this thing down to like 300 baud. So we'll use 9600. Um, some of the early uh, VT terminals uh, did support up to 9600. So we'll do that. And then um, exit setup. And uh, then I'll go ahead and uh, apply power to the Raspberry Pi. Mm -hmm. And there we go. Uh, Raspberry Pi has uh, booted up. I'm going to go ahead and log in. Okay, I've logged in here on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, you can see that I am talking on uh, TTY USB 0 at 9600 baud. And uh, let's just verify that our terminal is set to VT52. And it is. Now, um, a bit of a difficulty here is that most of the, these early terminals did not support hardware flow control, which is RTS-CTS on the uh, RS-232 lines. And they also were not fast enough to keep up with all of the escape sequences that might be sent from the operating system to uh, reposition a cursor, uh, insert text, and so forth. And uh, they did support X on, X off, uh, which was just to send a character to the uh, host system to say, okay, stop transmitting, or okay, go ahead. Uh, that's the Control S and Control Q characters. Uh, unfortunately, um, modern software is not terribly tolerant of X on, X off. They expect a 8-bit clean channel that doesn't intercept characters like that. And um, in some cases, actually, some of the USB serial drivers in Linux don't even support X on, X off. So I had to uh, switch to a different uh, USB serial interface for this. So what I often do, if I'm going to run a modern program, uh, I'll run it under a program called uh, Screen, which uh, can handle X on, X off for it, and then we don't have to worry. So I'm going to just do a quick demonstration and show you Emacs on this um, modern Emacs running under VT52 emulation, <laughs> under GNU screen, on this VT510. And then we'll go ahead and uh, swip, uh, switch over to ITS on the PDP-10. So first I'll start screen. And I have it set up to emulate a VT100. And then we'll start up Emacs. And there it goes. You don't have quite all of the uh, things that you would have on a modern uh, VT510, such as the reverse video down there uh, on the top and the bottom lines, but it's working. So let's go ahead and exit from this. And uh, we'll exit from screen as well. Let's uh, take a look at our uh, terminal settings, and, and it does look like we still have uh, X on F, X off set. So let's clear the screen. And now we're ready to fire up the uh, emulator. So I have written a um, collection of emulators uh, that can be used on Raspberry Pi. It can also be used under Docker on your own machine if you'd like. It's called Vintage Computing. I'll post a link to it in the notes. And so it makes it kind of easy to fire up all sorts of different things. So I've got it all prepared to boot the PDP-10 with ITS. So I'll just run this command. Okay, uh, now we see the uh, DSK DMP prompt, and one thing about ITS is it sort of predates modern uh, conventions on how a command line is supposed to work, so there's um, odd things going on, I guess I might just say. So we, we type ITS, press enter, and then I press escape, and hit G. All right, now we are... Uh, says system job using this console, so that means that uh, we booted. I'm going to just sort of guess that this booted a lot faster than uh, ITS would have booted on a PDP-10. Um, so at this point, I need to press Control z uh, to sort of log in. ITS was um, made by uh, basically hackers at MIT. Uh, and I use that not in the terms, not in the sense of people that 
violate security, but in the sense of people that like uh, modifying software. And uh, they had a strong ethic that uh, information should be free and open. And so ITS did not uh, support passwords at the beginning. Um, they were sort of strong-armed into that later, but it didn't at the beginning. So um, we're going to actually create a new username, uh, which you, you can just do at this point. And so I'm going to type colon login, and uh, I'm going to just call it retro. Okay, so uh, it's been created. Um, it's uh, complaining that there isn't a home directory for this user. That's okay, but uh, we can create it anyway. And to do that, we type control R, and then we type retro, semicolon, dot dot new dot parentheses user. Okay. And the directory retro is created by retro. Um, it says file not found. The documentation says it just always does that, uh, even though the directory was created. And in fact, um, creating a directory in uh, ITS is an activity that gets added to the system log, interestingly enough. Um, okay, next we're going to tell it that we are using a VT52. So I type colon TCTYP. VT52, and uh, to be honest, I really don't know much about ITS colon kill. I don't know what that means, but uh, it looks like it worked. Um, let's try firing up Emacs. So to do that, we type Emacs control K. Now we're in Emacs. Isn't that amazing? Um, and I can just go ahead and start typing here. And uh, here's my uh, thing that I need to post for this anyway. And let's see, do my arrow keys work? Well, sort of. Not really like they usually would. Um, L, control L does uh, repaint. So I probably need to more, more use the uh, control keys that you're used to in Emacs rather than the arrow keys. So control E to go to the end of the line. Let's, let's just see what happens if we try and fill up the screen. and it actually scrolled properly. I tried this earlier uh, over SSH uh, in uh, VT100 mode, and it did not work right. It's quite possibly because the terminal I was using wasn't 80 by 24 or 80 by 25, but uh, this, this did seem to work. So let's see if we can scroll back up. You know, an editor that, that was um, interactive like this was, uh, you know, an innovation at uh, one point in time. So uh, I should be able to save with Control X, Control S. Uh oh! Now I ran into my uh, problem with uh, X on, X off because Control S is the X off key. But uh, there we go. I hit a Control Q and uh, that got it. So I'm going to just save it to a file called test. I got an error message saying non-existent directory. You know, I may not know how to save out of Emacs, but that's okay. I do know how to exit. Control X, Control C. So we have Classic Adventure on here. And uh, we're going to go ahead and just type quit, or I don't really know what the command is to exit Adventure, but that's all right. If I press Control Z, then I get back to the uh, uh, console here. I don't actually know how to clear the screen. It seems like um, it, it uh, just kind of wraps around to the top and keeps going, but that's all right. So at this point, uh, we're going to go ahead and shut down the system. So I type colon lock, and then I type five down, <clears throat> and uh, we're going to Okay, ITS uh, went down, or is going down. Uh, in any case, that's the end of uh, ITS here. So, um, hope you enjoyed this little video. Um,
demonstrating operating system and uh, emulation of hardware from the 1960s using a uh, DEC terminal from the 1990s, emulating a DEC terminal from the 1970s with an IBM keyboard from the 1980s. And, of course, a Raspberry Pi that uh, comes from, uh, I guess I got that in 2019.